In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down Benedict Matherin and why he is such an amazing, insane basketball player. Let's get down, let's check it out. Really quickly, if you want to be able to shoot the basketball further and better, make sure to go check out my hardest basketball shooting workout down in the description below. Okay, so in this first clip, what does Benedict Matherin do to be able to attack this rim and get that dunk? Well, when he's attacking that rim, he's got his shoulders well past his knees. And he's also, as we can see, running on his toes. This will help you accelerate much faster past your defender. But also, he's got his shoulders below the defender's shoulders. This is another major point. This gives you leverage to get past that man, as we just seen there. That small little bump right there, lifting up into his chest, will push that defender down onto his heels, as we can see right there. At that time, he uses his off arm to be able to keep that defender behind him to get that dunk. It's all about leverage and angles. And we can really see the use of that off arm right there, making contact with that defender's body, keeping him in jail behind him, and then going up and smashing it down. Again, when he's driving here and he's attacking, he's getting his shoulders below his defender's shoulders. This is a major part of being able to attack the rim. But when he attacks this rim, he gains a secondary and potentially even a third defender and it's really hard to try and score on that but what does he do he takes long two steps one two towards the rim that last step being the longest and he's got two hands on that ball he then goes up with two hands and because he has a lot of core and hip strength Definitely work out your core and your, your hip strength every other day. This is a major portion of your body that will get you those N1 baskets. He then makes contact with that defender and he's able to get that ball up to get that layup. Also on defense, look at his defense, willing to sacrifice his body to get that ball, diving for that ball. He's playing for a contract. He's playing to get in that league. He's able to then get that ball because of his hustle and then he stepped into a three. If you want to go anywhere in basketball, you have to show hustle. You have to show that you're willing to sacrifice your body for the greater good of your team and to get that ball. Not to mention, I'm going to tell you right now, if he didn't dive for that ball and he tried to walk to that ball, look at that player right there diving for it. If Benedict Matherin was walking or running towards that ball without diving, that player could have taken out his legs, which would have caused an injury. So, by diving for the ball in this case was actually a better option to actually limit the chance of getting injured. Also, coming off of a screen, understanding what his main defender was looking to try and do. Coming off of this screen, his defender was going over top, which means that you need to attack the basket. That allows you to keep your defender on your back, and that's what we see right here. That then forces the hedge man to come up just a bit too high. He's able to attack that hedge man. He makes that decision after that quick hesitation to attack that hedge man, which then draws that man and allows his teammate to be wide open. He's then a willing passer to get that alley-oop dunk. Another part of being a good teammate and a good basketball player is being a willing passer, dribbling with your head up, scanning the court to see what's going on, and then making the best decision due to what the other defensive players are currently doing. So if you're looking to become a better player, become pass first because it's going to open up more lanes for yourself as a player. Also being able to use different jab steps here, he's keeping that ball close to his body. That's going to stop that player from trying to hack in. You reach, I teach is the saying. So by keeping that ball close, doing quick jabs, getting that player down onto his heels, watch that jab onto his heels. He read that. The next jab is a shot fake and then a quick rocker, rocker step where he does a quick jab and then brings it back right there. He then takes one quick hard dribble off his left inside foot and then he takes that step back going right left. At this time he's able to go up for that shot, kicks his right leg out, gets that and one. But the reason why he wants to kick that leg out is to get his right side in line. 
That's a major, major reason why he made that shot. With this step back, he's squared up. He's not a squared up shooter. He doesn't shoot squared up. Not many players do. So the reason why this is important and for why I'm pointing it out is by kicking your right leg out, if you're going towards your right side, that's going to allow your right arm, your shooting arm, to get in line. And that's why it's so good going left for right-handed players, because you can hit that step back and you're already in line with the basket. But by going right, you're not in line. You have to kick that leg out, and he does that perfectly and gets the and one, and then of course gets the swish afterwards. And then coming off of the pin down here, he gets that ball, he gets it on his left foot, and one thing that a lot of younger players will do is when there's a player playing really tight, they'll turn their back and they'll face force face this way. And when you're facing this way, you don't see the rest of the court. And of course, you want to limit that happening. So what does he do? He does a quick reverse jab that creates space. Watch how he creates space here. Instead of turning into that player, he uses his back to clear out that player. And how he does that is to take a right step into that player and then he squares up. That allows him to get viewing of what's happening on the court. At this time, he keeps that ball high. He wants to keep his ball away from those reaching hands. Again, you reach, I teach. Now, look how much space he's created. He's gone from being guarded really tightly to then reverse pivoting, keeping that ball high, and now this player is backed up because now he's afraid of that player driving. By facing the basket, you are now a threat to the defense, and when you are not facing the basket, you are no longer a threat. So, what does that tell you? That tells you that by doing a quick reverse pivot to clear out space, you now have a lot more space, you're no longer being pressured, and you can make a quick attack move. Here, he goes for a quick jab, and then he does a shot fake, which, by the way, if you're a defender, never go for a shot fake when the guy's foot is behind him. That just means he's going to drive. And then he attacks that left side because, watch, that's the top foot. Attack that top foot, left side. Two dribbles, gets past that defender, and he attacks the rim. If he was to take a second, or I mean a third dribble after that, this man would have picked off or at least made it a lot harder of a layup. But by only taking two dribbles, you want to limit your dribbles to one or two when attacking the rim, then that allows him to get that layup. Make sure to get that book down below the hardest basketball shooting workout if you're looking to shoot that basketball further or more accurately. Anyways, I hope that you've enjoyed. Hit that like button and subscribe.